friends with, there was rumors of romance, but apparently just friends with uh, a, a dancer named the Satin Doll, who used to be a dancer for Duke Ellington back in the jazz days. And I had kind of known a little about that. That wasn't completely new to me, but apparently she was very talkative with the police. So a good chunk of the police record is is Satin Doll just spo- <laughs> just spouting off um, and being very direct that she has no doubt in her mind who put the bomb in the car. Mm-hmm. And and they still this is an unsolved case. They don't know who did it. You know, to this day, there's a general agreement of of who ordered the bombing and who planted the bomb. But there's not enough evidence to actually prove it. Mm -hmm. And everybody's dead now anyway. (laughs) But so hopefully what comes out of this is that people will offer more information to Mary that was not available at the time. Because maybe people were afraid to talk to police. Or maybe police didn't talk to the right person. Whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm pretty excited to see what, what could come out of this. Yeah, they talked to uh, a former employee uh, of Augie's and, you know, talked about what would go on at the bar. And uh, it seems like, generally speaking, he, uh, Augie was a really well-liked guy. But it's kind of funny, the former employee who didn't want his name on record, he's got the quote that says, I got a Harvard education working at Palmy's, the tavern. I really got a Harvard education in the hustle game. <laughs> I thought, I like that. And I, and I don't think that he necessarily means hustling like in a bad way. I think he just means like, you know, constantly doing things. Mm-hmm. But it's a, it's a great quote. Uh, Mary spoke with, uh, Joe Pistone, the undercover agent, uh, who was in Milwaukee. I don't feel that he really added a lot that hasn't already been known. Um, he did write his own book, so didn't really add a lot from that. But it was pretty neat that she was able to get him on the record. Mm-hmm. Oddly, she wasn't able to get Augie's kids. They they declined to talk with her. and Which is strange because she would have a relationship with the, her kid, his kids in theory, right? Yeah. Now, And I don't know if she knew them ahead of time or not. I'm not really sure. But it is odd that they didn't want to go on record because this is, you know, presumably in their benefit to get these answers. Uh, I don't blame them. I mean, I imagine this is obviously a very traumatic event. And, you know, if that's something that they're not comfortable talking about, they're not comfortable talking about. So, like, I'm not blaming them, but it it is definitely unfortunate that that they couldn't uh, add to this because and his Ari's there probably kids. aren't many people that are that would know him better. Are his kids would have been with the Duke Ellington the singer or <laughs> no, no, no 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 okay no no he had a he had a wife and a family okay um yeah there's it's this is a part I'm not sure about because the the Duke Ellington person happens to be black and i know from fbi records that there were always rumors among mob guys and just the italian community in general that didn't like augie because augie had a black girlfriend (laughs) but i can't tell you a hundred percent that the black girlfriend they're referring to is the satin doll okay because in the record that i see like her name is blanked out Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's the same reference, or if he's hanging out with Sandal and through her, you know, or maybe not even through her, but you know, meets some other girl. Okay. I don't know. Okay, and and maybe people were mistaken. Maybe they just thought you know them hanging out and and having a good time that they were dating and they weren't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, it's, it's it's a lot of speculation when you're dealing with people just passing rumors on to law enforcement because. Law enforcement just writes down what people tell them. It's not always necessarily accurate. Right. I don't know. I mean, I mean, that's probably about the bulk of it. But I just absolutely, I love that this uh, came out. 
in this this really grand way and it it should reach a whole new audience because of it because this story hasn't been news in over 40 years mm-hmm. so there should be a whole bunch of people that have still never heard this story and that'd be a big deal um get it back into the conversation for people that did know it but yeah see where things go because as great as this article is, as massive as this article is, I know what she's collected, and this is probably not 1% of what she's collected. So mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens if this becomes like periodic newspaper updates, or there was talk for a while of turning it into a podcast. I'd love to see that. I don't know exactly what's going to come out of this, but I don't think this is the end. I don't think this is a one-off situation here. Mm -hmm. So be curious to see what comes out of this reporting and how people respond to it. And so you're familiar with enough with this story. Yeah. I mean, is this story something that could go on, live on as a podcast? I mean, it's, I mean, I guess what would be the approach of the podcast? Because it's just, it's. Does she feel like, do you feel like she, there's just so much information out there that it's, once this article comes, it's, it's just going to come start flowing in and they can just keep going on the new information they find or? No. Um, no, I don't think it could be like an ongoing podcast. But if it was set up as like a six or eight oh, part okay. mini series podcast. I get you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, because she's got enough people. Um, recorded. I don't know how many of the people she interviewed she recorded, but I know that a good number of them were. But she's already got some material there, you know, plus all the paper material she has. So there's no reason this couldn't be done in multiple parts. Uh, just like the bombing itself, I think could fit into one episode, but describing the whole background of the situation. Mm-hmm. I think would take a few. Mm-hmm. And anybody who's listened to like a true crime, to true crime podcast, like the miniseries kind of podcast, mm-hmm. I mean, you can make like five, ten episodes out of a very small thing. Yeah. Just by talking to people and getting some great stories out of it. Mm-hmm. So um, this is definitely something like that. This to me, I mean, is a, it's a huge deal and you can get some really good stories out of it. So. And uh, so we'll, we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. It's it's not my project. You you alluded to <clears throat> in previous podcasts that that there's a period in time where the, where the Milwaukee Mafia goes big into car bombings. It's a big thing, right? There's several. They're doing it. There's there's a handful of car bombings for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is this kind of the car bombing that kicks it off, or is this just the most notable one because of the nature of it and and the excess of which they. And, you know, they almost took, could have taken down a building. I think. <clears throat> well, so there's there's the attempted one prior to this. I'm not sure when the one in Las Vegas that's linked to Milwaukee happened, if that was before or after this. I feel like it's after, but I'm not sure. Um, but this one was huge. Like... So I'll read this. This is the quote from Prosecutor John Frankie. It's right this right on the top of the article. Mm-hmm. That was a pretty dramatic moment in terms of creating the sense in the community that maybe there is organized crime here. And maybe it's something that we should actually worry about. Because it's not just, you know, gangsters gunning down gangsters. It's people doing things that could kill innocent people easily. I like that when she quotes them, she leaves them the you knows and stuff. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, that's the thing. I mean, as we've talked about on this podcast many times, like Frank Balistrieri had made newspaper headlines for a long, long time. So it's not like people didn't know. Mm-hmm. But this is definitely like the murder that caught Milwaukee's attention. attention. Because, yeah, prior to this, like, guys shot in an alley, guys shot thrown in a ditch. And again, not that that's ever okay, but a lot of these times it was people who you're like, yeah, they were involved in some shady stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. that's a risky run. 
Not that that's okay. Augie, I mean, 